In this video, we'll go over cards which have effects that make them unaffected by other card effects, which is basically the same as being immune to everything in Yu-Gi-Oh terms. And at number 10, we have the Disdainful Bird of Paradise. This is probably one of the weakest monsters that has an effect, which makes it immune to everything, as it's a rank 1 exceeds monster that requires two generic level 1 monsters as its materials, and its effects are, it's unaffected by other card effects, i.e. immune to everything. And once per turn, you can detach two exceeds material from this card so that it cannot be destroyed by battle or take any battle damage for that turn. And with zero attack and defense, and with this effect being spell speed 2, basically you can use this effect to protect yourself for one turn. As it's unaffected by card effects, your opponent can't remove it from the field except with something like kaijus or destroying it by battle, which is super easy since it has zero attack and defense. And that's where the effect of this card comes in, to protect it for a turn. With the rank 1 engine having a couple of stall cards in it, this card fits kind of right in with the rest of them. But this card came out really late in the lifetime of Exceeds monsters, so it never really saw much play. And at number 9, we have the Winged Dragon of Ra, Immortal Phoenix. This card is a Winged Dragon of Ra support card, created to give the Winged Dragon of Ra one of its anime effects. Because for those of you who don't know, the original Winged Dragon of Ra has like 20 different effects in the anime. Which of them, only like 4 or 5 of them made it to the real card. So this card can only be special summoned from the graveyard, if the Winged Dragon of Ra is sent from the field to the graveyard. With a body of 4000 attack and defense, and having the distinction of being unaffected by other card effects, this card is much more in line with the unbeatable version from the anime. It also has the effect where you can pay 1000 life points to send a monster on the field to the graveyard as many times per turn as you want. But during the end phase, this card is sent to the graveyard, and then you can special summon the Winged Dragon of Ra Sphere mode from your hand deck or graveyard. So this card can only exist on the field for one turn, which kind of balances out the fact that it's a 4000 attack beat stick that is unaffected by everything, and has a non-destruction monster removal effect that can be used as many times per turn as you want. If all of these effects were given to the actual Winged Dragon of Ra, it would be a lot more comparable to the anime version. That's why this one has a whole bunch of restrictions for its summoning, and how long it can stay out. In at number 8 we have the Legendary Exodia Incarnate. This is an Exodia support card which has the effects where you can special summon it from your hand by sending a Forbidden One card from your side of the field to the graveyard. And it gains 1000 attack for each Forbidden One monster in your graveyard. And during the end phase you can add one Forbidden One monster from your graveyard to your hand. And if this card is destroyed by battle, you can draw a card for every Forbidden One monster you have in your hand. Oh, and it's also unaffected by other card effects. That's going to be an effect all of the cards in this list have, because it's kind of a criteria for them to be on this list. Now, this card would actually be pretty decent if the Forbidden One cards weren't all limited. So with all 5 pieces of Exodia in the graveyard, this card can have 5000 attack, and be unaffected by other card effects, which is a pretty good effect to have. But since all of the support cards for this are limited, meaning you can only have one of them in your deck each, there's only ever 5 targets for this guy to gain attack, from the graveyard. So you have to selectively mill these 5 cards, which is made easier by another one of the Exodia support cards called Obliterate. Now if all of the pieces of Exodia were unlimited, this card would actually be so much better, because it would be much easier to get those cards into the graveyard, than using a slow card like Obliterate to get them in the grave. Currently this card is nothing more than a gimmick, but if all of the pieces of Exodia were unlimited, and you can get 15 of them into the graveyard, you could have a monster with 15,000 attack and is unaffected by card effects, which would really live up to give an Exodia its Forbidden One status. And at number 7 we have Tamias Knight of Destiny. This card can only be summoned from the extra deck by sending 3 legendary knight monsters you control to the graveyard, and each of the legendary knight monsters are level 8 monsters which in themselves require a convoluted summoning requirement. So this card is kind of hard to get out. And its effects are, it's unaffected by other card effects, once per battle, during the damage calculation, you can make this card's attack and defense become equal to the highest attack on the field. And if this card is destroyed by battle, you can special summon the three legendary knight monsters from your hand deck or graveyard, ignoring their summoning conditions. So it will float into the three monsters that brought it out. Now what most people do when they bring this card out, is just put it in defense position and stall out, and try to win in some other way because your opponent can't get rid of this card without a kaiju or sphere mode. Basically, this card is unaffected by everything. 
none of your opponent's card effects can remove it from the field. And since its effect allows it to gain attack and defense equal to the highest attack on the field, your opponent can't beat over it easily. Especially since its effect takes place during the damage calculation, which is one of the hardest places to chain an attack increaser card. So, even cards like Honest can't be used to beat over it. This card's near invincible status really lives up to its tough summoning requirement, and I think deserves a spot on this list for that. And at number 6, we have Venomi Naga, the deity of poisonous snakes. This is the only card in the game which is both unaffected by all card effects and can't be targeted by any card effect. So it has double protection from being immune to everything, but really doesn't need it. Just being immune to everything is more than enough for it not to be removed from the field. It didn't really need to be untargetable as well. This card also has a floating effect where it can revive itself when destroyed by battle, by banishing a different reptile type monster from your graveyard, making it even more difficult to get rid of. And if this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent three times, you win the duel. One of the few cards that has an instant win effect. Now, the downsides to this card. It has no attack on its own, and gains 500 attack for each reptile type monster in your graveyard. So you need to mill a ton of reptiles in order to give this card a respectable attack to beat over stuff. And currently, there aren't very many good reptile type monsters that like to be sent to the graveyard. So reptile mill decks aren't really a thing. It can also only be special summoned by the trap card Rise of the Snake Deity, which in itself requires a specific card called Venominon, the King of Poisonous Snakes, to be destroyed by a card effect in order to activate the card, which then allows you to special summon Venominaga from your hand or deck. Which means this card falls squarely into the gimmick category, as it requires way too much setup in order to get out or do anything, or to even get on the field. Which means this card falls pretty squarely into the gimmick category, as it requires too much to set up in order to get going or do anything, or to even get out on the field without offering too much of an impact other than being really hard to get rid of. But it is really hard to get rid of. And that's why I gave it a decent-ish spot on this list. And at number 5, we have Blackwing Full Armor Master. This is a level 10 Blackwing Synchro Monster that only requires you to have a Blackwing Tuner plus generic materials. It has 3000 attack and defense and is unaffected by everything, which is pretty good on its own, so far, I think this is one of the easiest immune monsters that has a decent attack on this list so far. But on top of that, it also has an effect that can potentially allow you to steal your opponent's monsters or destroy them. As whenever your opponent activates a monster effect, you can place one wedge counter on that monster. And once per turn, you can take control of a monster with a wedge counter on it. And during your end phase, you can destroy all monsters on the field which have wedge counters. And since there are other Blackwing monsters that can help place wedge counters on the field, this is a pretty useful effect. The biggest problem with this card is the fact that it's kind of an awkward level for Blackwing monsters to go into. So it's not that easy to bring out in a Blackwing deck. But it's not super hard either. And also with 3000 attack, it's not that hard to beat over either. As the only way to destroy this monster is by battle, it's pretty easy for an average deck to match 3000 attack. Or surpass it by a bit. So, it's not super amazing, but still pretty good anyway. In at number 4, we have Ancient Gear Houtzer. This is an Ancient Gear fusion monster, which only requires two Ancient Gear monsters as its materials, and has an effect where it's unaffected by other card effects. Once per turn, you can just inflict 1000 burn damage to your opponent, and if it's destroyed by battle, it floats into an Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, which means it can float into Ancient Gear Golem. And since this card is immune to everything, and has a lowish attack and defense, your opponent will most likely activate its floating effect by destroying it by battle, which will allow you to go into something bigger. This card is just a weird card in its archetype, as it's the only Ancient Gear monster that's immune to card effects, but still a pretty decent card anyway, because it's easy to bring out and float into something bigger. And at number 3, we have Lyralisk, Independent Nightingale. This is a level 1 fusion monster, who gains attack equal to its level times 500. And once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to this card's level times 500. You can increase the level of this monster by the amount of exceeds materials attached to one of the materials used for the summon of this monster, as one of its fusion monsters is an exceeds monster, 
That means it can go up in level by five usually, because that's the standard amount used to bring out Lyralisk Assembled Nightingale. And to top it all off, this card is unaffected by other card effects, just like everything else on this list. Now, what makes this card really good is monsters which can copy its effect in the graveyard. Currently, there are two cards on the ban list because this card exists. The Tyrant Neptune and Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom. If the Tyrant Neptune copies this card's effect in the graveyard, it would gain 5,000 attack and be able to inflict 5,000 points of burn damage to your opponent every turn, while also being unaffected by card effects, which is an incredibly broken effect to have. And Dragon Starving Venom had a similar thing, where you could bring out two of them easily in one turn, and both of them could copy Nightingale's effect from the graveyard to inflict 8,000 points of damage to your opponent. Basically, because of this card's effect, any cards which have effects which allow you to copy card effects from the graveyard immediately have the potential to be super broken. Because of this card's ability to give them the immune status and gain a whole bunch of attack and inflict burn damage easily. And that's why it's at number three. But since this card is more of a support card to make other cards broken, I don't think it should take the numbers two or one spots from what is actually there. And at number two, we have Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. This is a rank 10 monster with 3,500 attack, which is unaffected by card effects. It also has a couple of other effects that rarely get used outside of the Raid Raptor archetype. But basically, because Ultimate Falcon just has the unaffected by card effects effect baseline, on top of having a big body of 3,500, if you use a card that allows you to cheat extra deck monsters out of your extra deck, like with Waking the Dragon, this card is one of the best targets to pick. As for some reason, Ultimate Falcon doesn't have an effect which restricts how it can be special summoned from the extra deck. So Ultimate Falcon is rarely brought out normally and is usually brought out by cheating it out with other methods. That's because it's really hard to get rid of. 3500 attack is kind of an awkward amount to beat over, as very few cards can go above 3000 attack. And that extra 500 attack is really just enough to make this card kind of a problem card to get over, where the common answer to actually destroy it by battle is with Utopia the Lightning. But if you don't have Utopia the Lightning, well, there's also a Boral Sword Dragon. Uh, I guess it's not that difficult for the average deck to get rid of, but it is still kind of a problem where you need to spend a lot of resources to specifically beat this one card. And if able to bring out easily with Waking the Dragon, then that's a pretty good trade-off. And at number one, we have Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus. This card gains multiple effects based on the amount of Exceeds materials with different names attached to this card. At four or more materials, this card is unaffected by card effects, except for Super Quant cards. So technically, it's not immune to everything, since it can be affected by cards from its own archetype. But that doesn't really mean anything unless you're playing against a mirror match. So I thought I would include it on this list anyway. Now, when this card has six or more materials, this card gains a mistake-like effect, which really shuts down most meta decks, and really made this card a legitimate win strategy. And in fact, because someone found a really consistent way to turbo this card out with a brilliant fusion engine, people started running kaijus in their main deck just to counter this card. With two or more materials, this card gains a spell speed to return any card on the field into the deck effect, which is great removal. And if this card is destroyed, it has a floating effect where you can special summon three different Super Quantal Mech Beast Exceeds monsters from your graveyard. This one card did everything, and was kind of designed that way. This card was meant to be a big boss monster that does work on board, and is hard to get rid of. And really succeeded at that too. The only problem with this card is it was supposed to be kind of hard to summon. The deck that could turbo this card out helped to popularize just how good the Brilliant Fusion Engine was and made people play kaijus in their main decks for a hot second, which I think makes it deserving of the number one spot on this list. All right, and that's the end of the video. If you think there's other immune cards that should have made this list, just remember this list is specifically about cards that are immune to everything and not immune to mostly everything like towers. Or if you have ideas for future videos just like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.